Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today it's, I don't even know what day it is. I currently have COVID if you can't tell by my voice. It's not great, but I really wanted to film this video. I haven't filmed since December and I really wanted to get something out. So I thought I would show you how I plan long-term, how I try to plan long-term because if you've seen that video on time management on my channel, you know that I'm not very good at planning long-term. I haven't found like the right tools and the right ways to plan for the weeks ahead, the months ahead and yearly. That was like a monster goal for me. So today I'm going to show you what I'm trying to achieve for this year, what mindset I'm following to make sure I not stick to it because that's one thing I'm going to explain. I'm not good at sticking to things for a long time, but at least I'm, you know, following through and just making sure that I stay on track most of the time. So if you're interested in this video, then follow me along. I'll show you what I've planned for this year, how I plan to organize myself. So yeah, if you're interested, then stick around. Since like end of December, I've been trying to plan out my year, to do my goals, to do a 2021 review, and it's been very overwhelming for me. And I'm sure a lot of ADHD people can relate to this. When it comes to the end of the year, you're starting to get stressed about, oh my God, it's the new year. How am I gonna like manage to plan, organize? And because we struggle with those kinds of things like organization, managing our time, it can feel very overwhelming. So for a few weeks, I was just in a state of trying to figure out the perfect way to plan my year. That was really what got me lost. A few weeks later, it's already January and I'm still trying stuff. It was just all scattered around. And I was like, I want a system. I want something neat. I want something like YouTubers have where it's so like beautifully spread on Notion or in a bullet journal or in a planner. That's what I want, nothing else. I realized that this was very unachievable for me. I had to face that even if I wanted really badly to have something that looked like everyone else's journal, it was never gonna happen for me. So the reason I'm explaining all this stuff is because I want you to see that I was trying to find the perfect way to do things straight off the bat. I didn't want to spend any time changing it throughout the year. So this was the perfectionist approach. What my therapist suggested was to take a progressive approach. So the progressive approach would be, yes, I can try this planning approach to my life for this year. For example, I'm gonna start with bullet journaling or I'm gonna start with sticky notes and then I'm going to keep reviewing it every week, every month or so inconsistently, that is fine. If I wanna make changes, I adapt my plan throughout the year and that would be a progressive approach. And I don't know why, but I was really resisting that approach. Somehow in my head, I'm like, if people are able to pick a strategy and just stick to it, then I wanted to be able to do the same. But I'm quite aware now that that having ADHD means that's not necessarily the way we work. So the progressive approach is very, very useful. And I think it's useful whether you have ADHD or not, because it's always good to review and adapt. The more often you review, the more often you improve. If you have ADHD and you're trying to plan out your year, first of all, adopt this progressive mindset. Stop trying to make it perfect from the get-go. The second advice I can give you on planning when you have ADHD is to throw away everything you've learned about planning before everything you've watched on YouTube channels you've seen on Pinterest wherever you find your inspiration all those things come most of it from neurotypicals and striving for perfection when following neurotypicals advice is usually doomed to failure and it's gonna make us feel very bad what I mean by just scratch whatever you've learned before is just to take a step back and really ask yourself what do I want from a planner? Be very, very clear with what you need. And I know this can be like super hard for someone with ADHD. Just make the system yours. Knowing what you want can be really hard, but at least maybe you can know what you don't want. I discovered what I didn't want and what didn't work for me when I tried different methods. So one thing I tried was bullet journaling on the iPad. So I downloaded like a free digital PDF that I used on GoodNotes. And it was really fun because like I could write down stuff in any color. I could use like stickers and I had this like pre-made structure. It was really easy to fill. Did it really serve me? Not really. I would do my time blocking during the day, but I would never use this weekly schedule. So that's an example of something that didn't work for me. But what I had to realize and really accept is that I don't need much at all to actually function. Maybe just planning out my week in time blocks with post-it notes 
and having one app dedicated to my to-dos and using time blocking for my day can be enough. And that's something I'm gonna try doing this first month and review this technique and then maybe improve it as I go. If you have it usually, you're probably like me, you're probably trying to overcomplicate things. And maybe if we just went back to simplicity, we wouldn't struggle as much and we would get things done much more easily. So again, scratch everything you've learned and try to open your mind to what do you really want. Maybe it's really important for you to track your habits and that's fine. You can use either an app or you can do it on a piece of paper, literally. Just find those like elements that are really important to you and then do them the way you want to do them. It doesn't have to be digital and that's one thing I'm going to talk about in the next part. Okay, so now let me explain why you should try physical planning over digital planning. One reason I always prefer digital over physical is because I always thought that physical planning would get me lost very quickly because I wouldn't be able to compare things like right next to each other. In the digital world, if I want to compare things side by side, like, oh, how much did I sleep this week? I select those two weeks, I can compare it very easily. It's great to be able to do this, but first of all, do you actually do it? Like, do you actually come back like two months later and be like, hmm, how much did I sleep this week vs this week? Like, yeah, that doesn't really happen, at least to me. In an ideal world, I would make stats on like how I did in this aspect of my life and like how I can improve. This is in, in my dream life, but that never happens. So that was my first reason for not switching to physical. And the second one was that it was very systematic also. I didn't really have to think, I would just like fill in those boxes or even in my, this bullet journal. But as I said, it didn't work out for me. Okay, so why does physical planning work better for ADHD people? Apparently, when we physically write stuff down with a pen on paper, it seems less abstract to us than if we write things down digitally. And when my therapist told me this, I was like, Wow, it actually makes sense because I often feel very disconnected from the plan I'm making if I'm on my iPad, even more on my computer. What I plan on my computer seems very abstract and very far from me, and it's very hard to describe, but it just feels like I'm looking from the outside. I'm not involved 100% like I would want to be with my planning. When I write things down, it feels like I own my stuff. It feels like I own my planning and my tasks and I can take control of them if it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. For someone with ADHD, I'm sure you can relate. So that's why he told me like, why don't you try to physically plan instead of digitally plan? Why don't you take sticky notes, code code them? I actually bought some, you know, pink, blue, yellow, green ones to try. I told him I had trouble planning my weeks. He was like, okay, so just Take a piece of paper, write down the amount of time you want to spend on each activity for this week. So let's say you want to make a YouTube video. Okay, so you're going to spend, what, 10 to 15 hours on it. Roughly, like, determine the amount of time you want to spend on it to achieve your specific goal. So one week would be make a video from beginning to end. Okay, 10 to 15 hours. Then you want to work out. Maybe you'll say three to four hours during the week. Then obviously plan your meals. One to three hours of meals per day then if you have work great fit it in and then you have time to do other things so imagine you had a project of learning a new language let's say you want to spend about two or three hours during the week to do this and let's say you also wanted to read do some meditation whatever everything you want to do match it to a specific amount of time you want to dedicate to it and then fit it in your planner what's useful about using colored sticky notes is that you can color code the activity so for example let's say pink for working out blue for meals yellow for work and green for youtube or something so any color code that fits your schedule and all the tasks that you have do a rough sketch of your week with sticky notes that way you have an idea of what's gonna happen every day and where your time is going at that point in the planning system we're not looking too much into the details and like how many minutes I'm spending on this task or another task. It's very general still. And so that's one thing I did and I'm gonna show you after shooting the whole video because I don't wanna move my camera. So yeah, to make this, I just decided, okay, what do I wanna do with my week? This week, I want to post a video. So most of my time was dedicated to, um, here was like video prep. Um, here, same thing, I think. Yeah, some kind of video prepping and then filming editing editing i said it would take me a lot of time because i wasn't sure like how long 
but maybe I was a bit pessimistic. But it's better to be pessimistic than too optimistic because then you're not disappointed. Here you can just see that I more or less color coded and I do my time blocking on the calendar because then I can be reminded when to switch task and like what exactly I'm supposed to do at what time. So the weekly planning is not to be too specific. So yeah, it's my first try at making one. So that's why I think I can obviously improve because as I said, progressive mindset. Yeah, but I think it's, it's decent for a first try and I don't know why, but like it's so satisfying what it's done. As I said, like doing it physically with post-it notes worked so much more than like planning my week on a digital planner. So that's the strategy I'm going to try for this month and hopefully this year if it works out. But as I said, I'm taking the progressive mindset. So I'm starting with this, whether it's perfect or not, whether I've tried it before or not, I trust my therapist on this one. And that's why I really wanted to share this with you because I started doing it. I planned with post-it notes and it felt really good and I felt connected to my plan. The next part, which is really important, was the weekly reviews. I told my therapist actually that I wasn't happy with what I was doing last year because I was really struggling to review my weeks and have kind of awareness of what I was doing good and wrong. I had at some point some kind of weekly reviews on Notion, but again, Notion was very overwhelming. There were too many prompts because it wasn't made by me, it was made by some other YouTuber, I think. There were too many things and I just kept it for two weeks and then let it go. So he was telling me to not necessarily have something very strict to review, I always expect reviews to be very structured and like answering prompts as I was telling you I talk a lot about prompts as in like what went good this week always a very systematic approach to reviewing and I think he was suggesting that I just let go of this very strict approach I can just like take a piece of paper and literally write down my feelings about the week and then be like okay so next week I'm gonna try this and just to have a very straightforward approach to reviewing a week and not try to make things more more complicated than they are. I still haven't done it because I started planning this week only with post-it notes so I think it will be very useful to have a kind of review like this that is not overwhelming, that is not complicated. I can have a notebook with me or even pieces of paper and I don't need to keep them to like review them in the future. I can just review on the moment, move on, and I know I won't come back to it. The only purpose of the review is to improve my plan. Okay, so in this video, I described how I wanted to approach planning, how I plan on planning my weeks, and I hope this was useful to you. Maybe you can apply it to your own planning strategy. I hope you can see that the most important thing in planning when you have ADHD is to make it your own and just forget about all the advice that you've seen online that comes from neurotypicals because we definitely work differently and our brains need simplicity and need to go straight to the point. Tailoring your planning to you will make a huge difference in your life and your productivity. If there is one thing you should take from this video is this, just make it simple, minimalist and suitable for you and you only. It doesn't need to be understood by anyone else. It doesn't need to be pretty. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just start doing something for you and then improve it as you go. Remember, progressive mindset. So yeah, I really hope this is gonna help you. Obviously, I only talked about weekly planning, weekly reviews and stuff, but that was already a very big part of the planning I wanted to do. I uh, will probably make another one where I explain like a minimalist approach to planning when you have ADHD. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on the like button below. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to the channel and click on the little bell thingy so that you can get notified when I post another video. And yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around. Bye!